When I was 12 years old, I wrote a Star Trek Voyager fan fiction. I published it under my real name. It is still available when you Google me. Did you know that over 90% of the data that exists in the world today was created in the last three years? And that by 2020, over two megabytes of information will be created every second by every human on the planet. The Mozilla Foundation estimates there will be over 30 billion connected devices by 2020. And all of these devices, when connected to the internet, will be collecting data. The type of data that companies collect about us really varies in terms of what the company is and what it's trying to accomplish. So somebody like Google might collect information about your contacts list if you've got Gmail, but because they own YouTube, they're also collecting information about the videos you watch, and because they own Chrome, they're also collecting information about the websites you visit. So your mobile phone, social media accounts, online shopping applications. Your smart TV and your smart car are all collecting and sharing data. Soon, even your pet will be on the act. In many cases, the data will be used by companies to sell you more of what they think you need. But the data will also be used for other purposes, like making your city work smarter. People definitely don't understand how companies like Amazon or Google use their data in part because it's difficult to keep track of it. You know, when you visit a website, you're not just visiting that one page. There are lots of ad tracking things on the web page. There are information about where you click. There are lots of companies involved in what happens when you visit a web page. And so there's no clear way of seeing where all that information goes or how it's being stored. More and more, the data that you share is being used to develop artificial intelligence, where computers use your data to learn from past activity and make new decisions. And in some cases, your data is also being used to enhance robotics, where repetitive tasks are completed by machines rather than people. So by sharing our data, we're helping companies grow and develop. And our data is being used to replace human activity with artificial intelligence. The assumption that data is yours this is a really hot question. Who, who owns data? And I feel somehow, I'm not sure where I got this from, that I own my data. My name feels very much like mine. And that's not necessarily the case right now. If you read terms and conditions, you very clearly agree to a company owning your data. So if you're using any service that's free to access, then someone, somewhere, is having to pay. Social media accounts and mobile applications which are free to download will generally be paid for by advertisers. Advertising on digital platforms such as YouTube and Facebook generates over £10 billion of revenue each year in the UK alone. And the value of that advertising is based on the data collected from the millions of people who use that platform every day. So you could argue that the ultimate price of sharing our data is an uncertain future. And thus it's our data that's helping to shape the future, maybe we need to be more aware of the value of that data. Data is massively profitable. The, the top five most valuable companies in the world are all American data companies. This is the expression, data is the new oil. In 2011, oil companies were the most valuable. Only five years later, data companies were calling the shots. American data companies. So our data has value. And in the future, we could begin to trade that data in return for goods and services. In that sense, data could become a currency stored in data banks, where you could save and grow your data. Whatever happens, it's clear that we need to be much smarter with how we share our data. And who we share it with. Over the course of history, when we've made things, they have only lasted for a short time. Buildings crumble and plants decay and things go back to the ground. But Data is as shiny tomorrow as it is today. And so 50, 100, 250 years from now, somebody might have information that you put out without thinking one day or without realizing one day. And it could still be picked up and used just as it could today. And we really need to think about the ramifications of that, what that means for us and how we share our information. Our liberty is at risk when we hand over our data because one, we hand over our voice. And two, we concentrate all the value in a select few. If the future is being driven by data, then to own the future, we need to own our data.